problem, and I appreciate him willing to um, to put some solutions forth here. But I think it's really important that we talk about the bigger picture when we talk about secret holes. And I do want to make it clear I'm not interested in holding anything in secret. As a matter of fact, whenever we do, as part of steering or personally, we let the cloakroom know they can tell anyone they want that we're holding a bill. So I'm not trying to preserve any kind of aspect of a secret hole, but I think it is important that America know what we're talking about here. At this point in the Senate, 94 percent of all the bills are passed unanimous consent. Ninety-four percent. So this is hardly a lack of productivity. And what this means is 94 percent of the bills that pass the Senate have no debate, no vote, no amendments, no reading of the bill, no online disclosure, and very often no score from the Congressional Budget Office. When I first took over the steering committee, one of the things I learned real quickly is that whenever we're having a break, if we're going for a week like we are this week, on my way to the airport, I would get a call from staff telling me there were dozens of requests to pass bills, unanimous consent, because they knew we were all out of, going out of town. And a lot of them had some pretty big price tags on them. Folks, you don't get $13 trillion in debt when you're doing things right. And part of the problem is that 94% of the bills that pass the Senate pass in secret. The problem is not secret holes, it's a secret passing of bills, when very often we don't even know who's requesting bills. And if we didn't have staff available at night when they run their so-called hotlines, which means the phone in your office rings, they ask if you will agree to pass a bill. You haven't read it, you don't know what it's cost, but if you don't agree to pass it by unanimous consent, you are holding the bill. If you ask to read it for the next day or two, it's very likely that some association is getting emails from either the Republican or the Democrat side that, that Senator Mint is holding this desperately needed piece of legislation, who nobody else has read. I'd be glad to work with my colleagues on dealing with this issue if they believe secret holes are a problem. But I frankly think passing 94 percent of the bills without anybody even reading them or knowing they're getting passed is not a good way to do business. I think it's fair to have some system where, first of all, you cannot secretly ask for a bill to be passed unanimous consent. And that's what goes on here today. And we should look at the Coburn-McCaskill Amendment, where if you want something passed, unanimous consent, in the dark of night, that you have to put it on the Internet for at least three days with a cost from the Congressional Budget Office so we know what we're getting into. Again, I want to remind you, we don't have a problem in Washington of not passing enough bills or spending enough money. The problem we have is we're passing bills that we don't even read that have price tags that are running our country into a crushing debt. And again, I want to work with my colleagues. But if you're opposed to secret holes, which are really not a problem, and I'm not aware of one where we don't know who's holding it. But I have a problem with people secretly asking, asking that bills be passed in secret and that 94 percent of the bills in this place get passed that way. There are a lot of pressing issues that we face as a country, but one of them is not secret holes. And if we want to spend floor time debating it, I want to be involved with that debate. But we have no problem here of things that are being slowed down. The problem we have is every week, just like this week, we're adding to the spending, we're borrowing more money as a country, we're increasing our national debt, and we're expanding the federal government. This is not something we need to speed up. We need members of the Senate to read bills. We don't need to be talking about holding a bill when someone innocently asks to read a bill and let me let you know tomorrow. Let's work on this. If you want bills to go through quicker, let's get rid of secret passing of bills that have never been on the Internet, that have never seen the light of day. And this is something, again, that my colleagues I know are well-intended, but they've only gotten a piece. The real problem are secret bills 
and members secretly asking them to pass, I'll be glad to let you know I'm holding them. Would, would the senator yield on me to hold yield, those bills? Yield for a question. Without, I will in just a with, moment. Without giving up your floor time. Sen I, senator from South Carolina say, has the floor. I, I, let me ask the senator a question and then I'll yield. Could we include in your legislation the idea that whenever someone wants to pass a bill, unanimous consent, that they have to come to the floor and say, I, Senator Jim DeMint, want to pass this bill, a bill I've not read, which has not been online for three days, which has no score from the Congressional Budget Office, and I desire to pass this bill with no debate and no roll call vote. If we would do that as individuals, I'll be glad to give up my right to any secret hold. And I'll yield to the senator. The, uh, the senator and I, I think, are making some, some progress here because I was about to pose almost the same question to my colleague. I believe the senator from South Carolina is talking about the Coburn-McCaskill proposal in terms of trying to make sure that senators have actually read legislation. I have Senator DeMint already indicated to Senators Coburn and McCaskill that I am interested in being a co-sponsor of this legislation. I think it is a constructive idea. I think, in effect, we're asking each other uh, the same uh, uh, questions. So I think the measure you're talking about, the Coburn-McCaskill bill, is an important one. I've indicated that I would be a co-sponsor. So by way of just saving some, some time, would my colleague be willing now to let Senator Grassley and I advance our proposal to eliminate secret holds today, given the fact that we've got more than a decade's worth of work now that I have publicly acknowledged that I think the point that the senator from South Carolina has made, which is very much in line with the Coburn-McCaskill bill, I think your point is a valid one. And my hope would be that after putting more than a decade into this effort, the senator from South Carolina would let us finally get a vote uh, on this bipartisan effort to eliminate secret holds with this public acknowledgement, at least on my part, that I think your point is valid with respect to senators reading bills, and I intend to be a co-sponsor of the Coburn-McCaskill legislation. Well, I thank the senator for being willing to, um, to work with other colleagues. It's unfortunate that you've uh, spent a decade on this bill and missed the main point. The main problem here is secret bills, not secret holes. But if you are willing to modify your bill with the Coburn-McCaskill language, and if it includes uh, revealing who is trying to pass the bill along with putting it online with a Congressional Budget Office score, I'll be glad to support your efforts uh, for this bill. But I will not support the passing of your bill a la carte without the language uh, being modified to include the Coburn-McCaskill amendment and the revealing of whoever is asking that bill be passed. So uh, I, again, I would enjoy working with my colleagues uh, if this is important uh, to you to get passed. Again, I think there's certainly more pressing issues, uh, but I'm not interested in holding anything secretly. Uh, and if uh, you would work with us on modifying your language, I think we could get this thing passed, and maybe even by unanimous consent. Would, would the senator yield again without giving up his uh, right to the floor? Uh, yes, I will. My understanding from the sponsors, Senators Coburn and McCaskill, they are not yet ready. In other words, we have been talking to them. I've already indicated to Senator Coburn that I would be a co-sponsor of his proposal. So we now have what amounts to not just a private acknowledgement that your point is valid, but a public one here on the floor of the Senate. I would just say to my colleagues, it's my understanding from the sponsors that they are not yet ready to bring this before the United States Senate. And that's why I'm hopeful that given the acknowledgement that you have a valid point with respect to making sure that bills are actually read, my hope would be that the senator from South Carolina would let Senator Grassley and I go forward, finally have that uh, vote, given the fact that we have 
spent more than a decade laying uh, the groundwork and that we could at least make some progress uh, here today uh, in the Senate. Um, I thank the Senator. I think if we've waited a decade um, for this bill, we can spend another day or two to get it right. And if you certainly uh, are supportive of their language, I know their ledge staffs well enough that we could get this incorporated in your language probably within a few hours and get this thing done, and I would be happy to help with that. So uh, I thank you for your interest in cooperating. I thank the President, and I yield back. Mr. President, 